Track Record with your hosts Mike Shea and Robert Yetter. Brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. Hello everyone and welcome to the next installment of Track Record. As always, you are joined by myself, Robert Yetter, and... And by me, Mike Shea. And we have uh, some interesting things evolving here at Track Record. Um, If you can recall earlier episodes, we typically do a theme. Now, in the last couple months, we have been uh, doing a little bit, you know, changing that up a little bit. We've done, we we do our best of episodes at the beginning of every month. Um, And we also do an off the record, which is uh, us shooting the shit. But we have... We've decided to kind of um, add a new format to the repertoire, and what it's going to be is we're going to select uh, lesser-known artists from the music community like uh, Bandcamp and SoundCloud um, because we do a lot of uh, we do a lot of listening and browsing on those platforms, and we thought that it, it, you know, putting a spotlight on certain artists that may not get as much of a spotlight as as artists that we normally talk about. You know, uh, big artists. I mean, we we talk about you know major artists a lot, um, and we wanted to give a, a spotlight to some of the to some of the smaller players that we think are making some waves. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. So that's what today's episode is going to be about. Uh, Mike and I have selected music from uh, Bandcamp, well, also coincidentally on SoundCloud. Uh, I mean, if you ain't on both, then I don't know what you'd be doing. But um, And we're just kind of going to you know, give a little... Um, a little review of, of what they what the artist does and um, you know give them give them a little spotlight. Yeah, and what's great is because even Tide has a presence on SoundCloud as well. We distribute our podcast there. We have music up on there as well. Um, any any artist or band that we talk about on these these indie pick episodes, I guess you can call them, um, we will repost their music onto our SoundCloud feed. So if you're not following us on SoundCloud, you should do that because anything that we talk about on this show that's on SoundCloud, we're going to repost so that it's easier for you guys to find. Um, and also we'll put the links to like where you can buy the album on Bandcamp or wherever in the description as well. Because um, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about is kind of in the same sphere that we're in, which is self-sustaining um you know unrepresented just kind of making making their bones in the world making their way in the world and uh that's where a lot of that's where i mean that's where every musician's roots lie but especially in this day and age there is so much music that's readily available because in the computer age anyone can you know produce their own stuff and record their own stuff and get it up online and Bandcamp, SoundCloud, and Noise Trade have kind of been the three best ones for that sort of thing. Um, and so it's kind of like our way of saying, you know, we should, we, should do, we should do one to them as we'd like them to do one to us. We're going to talk about them. And uh, it helps us build relationships and build networking with a lot of these bands and artists. But it also helps us share really good music that maybe isn't as readily available or um, out there in in the zeitgeist as, say, a Metallica or a Behemoth or a Camelot or a Judas Priest. Um, instead, this is stuff that you'd have to go looking for. And I spend three or four days a week just scrolling aimlessly through the Bandcamp app on my phone looking for something new to listen to, especially yeah. stuff that's not metal. I mean, there's plenty of metal on, noise, on, on Bandcamp, but... Um, you know, most of the metal I listen to is is pretty mainstream, and so 
when I look when I want to listen to stuff that's outside the realm of what I normally listen to, Bandcamp is what I go to because it's got a lot more a lot more variety, I guess. Mhm. So, I think it's this is going to be a lot of fun. Bandcamp and, is my yeah. favorite platform. I mean, yeah. The way that we've actually um we are dot com website even tied ent dot com actually goes directly to our band camp um and it's very um you know it's very clean looking um and you can actually oh put, yeah you can make it look you know you, you think of band camp and it's just you know they post albums or whatever on there but you can actually make it a pretty full fledged website um, they have pretty some some pretty powerful tools, a lot more than than say like SoundCloud, um, yeah, which is a lot more uh, based on the the community. Um, and and again, you know, the SoundCloud has that that ability where yeah. you can repost a track or or you know an album or a playlist and um, just kind of show other people what you're listening to. And so that we're that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, SoundCloud definitely is more of the um, social networking side, right? Than Bandcamp is. Bandcamp is more the business and marketing side because that's where you sell music and and yeah, yeah. If you know what you're doing, if you really take the time to read through the settings and what's available to you on a Bandcamp account, like Robert did. Robert took the time one day to read through everything he could do with this. And was like, holy crap, we are not using this to its fullest potential. Right. And uh, our our website that we had originally was basically just a stepping stone to get to the podcasts and, and the band camp anyway. So right. it made more sense for us to move the dot com and move everything just over to the band camp. And take the time to really flush it out into what it could be. And I think, I personally think it's made it a much more sleek and efficient website than what we had. Yeah. Another thing, too, which we might activate in the near future is um, you can actually subscribe to to labels or artists. Um, if they have that that option activated on their account, You can you can subscribe and you can get, you know... It's like joining a mailing list, um, or, or you, and you can also, you know, get special privileges as a subscriber, you know, uh, early listening, you know, stuff like that, um, mm-hmm. sneak peeks to upcoming stuff, and um, so that's something uh, we might do here in the near future. Yeah, which is another, and it, it sets Bandcamp apart, you know. Yeah, and that's another thing. Like, like I said, you know, with. With SoundCloud, SoundCloud focuses more on the social networking aspect of it. With Noise Trade, which is a site that I learned about when I was working in radio, Noise Trade is very much, it's more of a newsletter type thing where you sign up for the newsletter and you get emails every week or every month with a bunch of stuff. And when you're okay. working in radio like I was, it was a good way for me to just not have to work hard. I would just take whatever I got in my newsletter and check it out. Uh, you could buy stuff on there. But Bandcamp has really, and God, they should write us a check for as much as we're stroking them off right now. Um, <laughs> Bandcamp kind of does all of that because um, yeah. I have a listen. I have a listener account for Bandcamp that's just that I use to buy music, um, and I'm able to add stuff to a wish list and follow certain artists and get notifications when they have new stuff posted. And uh, so that kind of covers the social aspect of it, and then. The marketing side of it, you know, with, with the store and having things up for sale, of course. And then, like Robert said, when we eventually get to the point where we're ready to set up the subscription service thing, that'll cover that. Yeah. Uh, that do that. I guess that newsletter side of things as well. So you, you can. And do... also on on the Bandcamp page, you can still get links to our podcast network and our Facebook page and our merch store. Yep, um, it's a full fledged website, and two, you can actually. Uh, another reason why everyone should get a band camp uh, is that you can actually sell physical merchandise on there. 
um, yes, as, well, as well as, you know, have your album up for streaming or for download. Um, if you have physical copies of anything, T-shirts, your album, any kind of merch you want to sell, you can actually do that on Bandcamp as well. Um, uh, Bandcamp puts great. a lot of power in the hands of the seller. Yeah. And that's why that's why we've, we're not so much trying to sell you guys on using Bandcamp as we are selling you guys on why we've invested as much as we have in Bandcamp and why we've moved everything over to there is because it really has become a great tool. And that, again, leads into why we're adding this kind of episode to our repertoire is because of how much Bandcamp has to offer. It felt like a gold mine that we simply weren't tapping into looking for music and albums to talk about. There is there is as much indie music on Bandcamp as there is mainstream music out there, you know, in the physical world, if oh, not yeah. more. You um, know, you just have so, to yeah. know, you, you know, you have to be diligent and um and picky in what and what you click on you know that's a, a, i mean because like you said anyone can anyone can upload anything now um i mean we use home studios um and ours may be a little further along you know we have some some decent equipment but anyone can i mean you can get a a usb thing for you know 30 bucks and you can record something or you know something like that and um yeah you can get a you can get a a blue snowball and a cheap laptop and set up a free account for something and and, you know get get audacity and yeah i mean that's how that's how i started i got it i got a i i started even lower i got a 15 dollar microphone that plugged into the like the 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 aux jack yeah, man. That sounded, it was, you know, it was about, you can't see me gesture with my fingers, but it was about that big. And oh, I used to have like a, bad. like, um, it was like a headset microphone combo. I don't, I don't probably came with a computer or something and yeah. I would record, um, in sound recorder. And I mm. think it would, it would give you a max of like either a minute or like 30 seconds or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so what I would do is I would, I would stick together these 30 second snippets and I would create a song like that <laughs> that I recorded. Oh man. It was uh it was pretty terrible actually. Um That's wild. <laughs> oh yeah, of, no, a bunch of bright eyes good. covers and shit I did that with. <laughs> but uh <laughs> That's how I got started in radio and it was because I was working for a radio station at the time, part-time and uh was getting ready to go back to college and was going to be helping run the college radio station and I got audacity in that cheap ass microphone and a library of sound effects and just started making my own radio promos and you and would self I well I self-taught about how to do layering yeah. and stuff that sounded good and it wasn't just for me I was making stuff for the station I worked at that they never they ne- they never fucking used of course cuz it sounded terrible yeah, but by the time I did go back to school and was and was running the radio station, I had I had learned a lot. You can learn a lot just by getting some free software and just playing with it. You really can. Oh yeah, that's. I'm sure that's where most of us start. But I, I was gonna say, you know, in, in being diligent about you know when you're browsing, I have I always, um, typically will make a selection. I will click on something based on um, an artist name or or an album name, but mm-hmm. a lot of the times it's the album art that sells. Oh you. yeah, and so you know, I try and put a lot of emphasis on the album art because if it's if it's engaging that way, you know, it's like it's like the true clickbait. You know, it really is. It's a legit album clickbait. album art. Will will draw people to your album, whether or not they like it and listen to it, it's another thing. It's still got to be good, but yeah. solid album art. That's I mean, it's 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 the same as it's like online dating. You're using Tinder. The first thing you see is, does this person look attractive to me? Yeah. So that's when you that's when you swipe on them. Then you start talking to them to find out whether or not they're a human piece of shit. Same with an album. The first thing you see is the outward appearance, the art. 
that's what makes you go, I want to get to know that album, then listening to it is is how you decide whether or not yeah. it's for you. And typically I see a lot I see a lot of this on, on SoundCloud more um is where, you know, a lot of people don't actually have art for their stuff. They'll just, you know yeah. they'll grab a, you know, a JPEG of something on, you know, Google Images and and, and Yeah. And I mean sometimes emoji. that can be engaging, but you know it it if you have if you have custom art, it goes a lot further in my book. That's why it pays to make friends with the art students, kids. That's um, right. Yeah, give them give give them twenty bucks, and they'll make some bitchin' art for you. Just saying, or just get Photoshop and and see what you can yeah. do. You know, yeah, whatever you want. But e- either way, having friends in the arts is helpful. Um, that's that's right. part of the reason why, why Robert and I work so well together. The man is a much better artist than I am in many different ways. All the art you see that we have uh, is done by him. I try. I try. You try. You I'm blushing. <laughs> well, so, so, let's, so folks, that that's. I think we're going to um, be doing this format a lot more. Yeah. This is uh, just how yeah, often I, guess I don't before, know, but what's that? It's a, I'll say it's an it's an untapped vein of gold, you know, like when you're playing Minecraft and you find the block of of coal, so you break it and there's five more, and you break those and there's five more. It's 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 there's so much good stuff in Bandcamp. There's a lot of crap, but there's even more good stuff, yeah, um, to find. So. That's yeah. That's that's the direction we kind of wanted to take, you know, to kind of keep the show fresh and and engaging, and also it it's again we're we're helping out our fellow our fellow low level music people. Yeah, man. So let's talk about some music, Robert. Let's do it. All right. So I'll kick us off. So lately, I have been on a on a goth rock dark wave kick. And I Can't go don't wrong. know why. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I've always been a fan, um, but for some reason lately, I've just been on a real kick with it. Actually, last week I got to go uh, spur of the moment. My friend won tickets to go to a show in Cincinnati to see Jonathan Davis perform live. Now, Jonathan Davis is the singer for Corn. Jonathan Davis is also releasing a solo album at the end of May that I had no idea about. Um, and I'm a corn fan, so I went to the show thinking maybe I'd see some corn covers. I, I I didn't know what to expect, but the tickets were free. Thirty minute drive. It seemed like it seemed like it was gonna be a lot of fun. And I was really impressed to see that he was he was the music that he played, he played all new songs except for a, a Neil Diamond cover that was weird and awesome. And um a song from Queen of the Damned, which he did the soundtrack for. And um but all the mu- all the all the new solo music he was writing was dark wave and goth rock and industrial and that kind of thing, which I'm a big fan of and been on a kick for lately. And listening to it also reminded me of this particular artist I had found on Bandcamp that I really liked, who I could easily see opening for for Jonathan Davis if he continues this solo tour. And the name of the artist band, we'll call it an artist, is New Haunts. New Haunts, which I think is meant to be a play on words of the word nuance or a happy coincidence. Hmm. Uh, New Haunts is actually a uh, a solo project of sorts based out of the UK. Um, it's uh, a female singer who does uh, all the producing and writing and all that. And she has musicians, of course, that help her out or she may play all the music herself. I'm really not 100% sure on that um, because, like a good gothic person, she's got a, some shreds of mystery around her uh, her bio on Pancamp. Um, but she's got a new album that just dropped May 3rd of this year, so a week and a half ago, called Worlds Left Behind. Um, what initially drew me to, cause the album cover itself is very nice. It's very photogenic. It's a picture of, of her, of the new haunts, 
uh, woman. We'll just we'll just call her New Hots. Um, standing surrounded by some large plants. It's it's very black. It's black and white. It it evokes a sense of 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 noir, which I'm a big noir fan right now. Uh, I mean, always have been, but I'm, I've been on a noir kick lately because I've been making this film. And uh, what I loved was the font she used for her name in the album title, because New Haunts is big and bold. Um, it almost looks like an aerial black font, only a little more narrow, um, and has the title. It's just uh, I'll send you a picture of the art, uh, uh, Robert, because I don't think I've shown you yet. I got um, it up. You got it up. I, I like that. It's it's simple, but it it evokes what the album is going to sound like. It, it gives you an idea of what you can expect listening to this album, um, which is a lot of fun. It's it's nine tracks. Um, it's listed as uh, eight pounds because they're from the UK, which converts up to like like 950, I think, US dollars. Um, which you can actually, what's great is she's one of the ones on Bandcamp that's really using it to its fullest potential because you can, I'm sorry, it's, it's five pounds, so 650, for the digital album, you can spend eight pounds or nine fifty to get the digital download. Plus, you also get some merch. You get a CD that comes in an, an actual CD um, as well, and uh, usually ships within a couple of days. And so, I like that she's using Bandcamp uh, to its more fuller extent with getting her merch out there. Um, the album itself. It, as the name and the album photo suggest, is very mysterious. It's got a strong sense of ambiance. Now, uh, the album is almost seamless. When I say almost seamless, a lot of the tracks seem to lead into each other, and the ones that don't, there's not like a huge like gap between the end of one and the beginning of the other. And while they may not be totally seamless, there is a good flow to them. One thing I'm usually critical about with an album is, and this has been happening a lot more in recent years, is it feels like bands have been dropping the big ones, like the guaranteed hits, all at the beginning of the album in a cluster. And then the last four, five, six tracks on the album are just like they're good, but you could they just kind of feel like filler, like those are put in as an afterthought. And for me, part of what makes a good album is putting the songs in an order that makes sense. It's like crafting a film or crafting a story. Put make things happen where it fits the best. Because I've been to see bands live who only had one album out, and so you know they're just going to play that album. But then they play the album out of order and to me it's like well why didn't you just put the album in that order like if you yeah. feel like this song works best as a big closing number why didn't you put it at the end of the album why is it the first track on your album well now granted granted sometimes you don't know a song is going to be big and popular um yeah i mean just from from personal experience if you look at if you look at like an album on our SoundCloud, typically the first two or three songs have the most amount of plays, right? Right. And so, yeah. in that mindset, you know, you you can put, you know, some three really engaging big hitters at the beginning, but that doesn't mean that the rest of your album can be cold, you know. Yeah, and I understand it's just like you know you want habits to, you, of, of people, you know. Yeah, you definitely want to start off big. I'm not saying like put a big number and then put something that you wrote at the last minute, um, but definitely don't cluster your album to where it's fifty fifty. Yeah, um, sh spread the love out a little bit because again, you never know what song is going to be popular at the end of the day. You might get surprised, right? Um, but again, it's just like if I'm going to go see a band play their album beginning to end, play play just one album, like, and then they play it out of order. Again, to me, it's just like if that song works so well as a big finishing number or a big opening number, 
why wasn't it like that on the CD? Now, I'm, that, and maybe that's just me, because a lot of my love for a band goes into like their live performance. There's a lot of bands I've listened to that I honestly didn't like until I saw them live. Yeah, um, and that's just me. But uh, anyway, with New Haunts. Um, the, the album again, like I said, it's just it feels like every track was placed meticulously. Like like a lot of thought went into which song works best before or after another. Mm-hmm. And uh, the ambiance of the song, it, 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 it this is definitely a great song or a great album to either. You know, on a quiet Sunday evening, sit back in your recliner and just get lost in. Or if you've got like a long car ride, just to throw on and just, even if you just want to go for a nice relaxing car ride, throw it on and zone out and just follow the road. Uh, this is a great one for it. The The writing is passionate. It really is. Uh, you could feel that she put everything into into her lyrics with this song um and what i liked is yes it's definitely dark wave it's definitely like an industrial goth sound but it doesn't fall into uh, a puzzle piece it doesn't fall into a mold there's a lot of goth rock and and and, and dark wave out there that's like the kind of crap you'd see on an episode of South Park where they're making fun of goth kids. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's easy to fall down that hole, and she doesn't do that. Everything feels honest. Uh, none of it feels shoehorned or forced. And I, I was really impressed with this. That's one that I've been listening to on repeat uh, constantly. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it, it, it breaks my heart that she's an indie artist in Bristol in the UK because it's like there's not a chance in hell I'm going to get to like go see her put on a show somewhere. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't know what much else I can say about it. Um, definitely one of my favorite tracks is a song called Waves. Um, also, I will say this. I like that the tracks have a nice variation in their duration. Some of them are two to three minutes. Some of them are five to six minutes. Uh, again, there's, there are some bands who were like, oh, we need to make sure all of our songs are like really long and epic. Like, I love Dragon Force, but there's no need for every song to be eight or nine minutes. It's, it, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> you can write shorter songs. They're fun, but you can write something that's three or four minutes, even five, and it'd still be good. Um, that's, that's the a lesson that, and I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before. Me being a a um, having a degree in the arts, uh, mm-hmm. literature, and writing, and so forth. Um, the phrase "kill your darlings." So when yeah, you know. Let let stuff be what it is. Don't you know? Let a song be what it is. And if you if you don't have if you have to force yourself to write another verse or force yourself to to you know extend it just for the sake of extending it, then then you're you're feeding your darlings, mm-hmm. um, and you got to kill them and let it let a song be what it is. Absolutely, I hundred percent agree. You see that in film, too, where a movie will be so long that you just sit back and go, you could have cut some of that out. Yeah. Um, But at the same time, there are also films and songs that have suffered from... Well, uh, I I say in music and film, there are two kinds of editing. There is editing for content and editing for time. If you're editing for content, you're going to make... You are making the best possible product you can. If you're editing for time, you are damning your product. Because yeah. editing for time almost always guarantees you're going to leave something out that takes away from the final product. Yeah. Um, so, again, 
if you find something is just naturally going to be long, don't try to shorten it for the sake of shorting, shortening it. Let it be what it is, like Robert was saying. But also, if you write a song and it just happens to be a minute, 25 seconds, but it sounds awesome, roll with it. Yeah. I, I've heard some great, great metal songs over the years that were under two minutes that have stuck with me because, hey, you know what? And you, you can do a lot in two minutes. You can do a lot in two minutes. You so. certainly can. See, so I, with this one, no, go ahead. I, I in, in personally, my music, I... I write it very slow, you know, um, slow stuff. By the so by the time I'm on like a second verse, it's already four minutes into the song, you know. So some styles just are long, and and but again, I I'll have you know, I'll, I'll have a nine minute song or I'll have a, a three minute song. It just depends how mm-hmm. what the creative process took me to, you know. Yeah, and it also depends on the project. We uh, I just posted uh, the uh, you could I Robert and I together put together the soundtrack for my short film, and when I was doing the demos for those songs in particular, those had to fit a certain atmosphere that was going on in the film, and so certain ones turned out to be five or six minutes. Certain ones turned out to be like a minute. Yeah. Um. It just again in that case the music so it all depends on what purpose your music is serving as well. If you're just trying to be artistic, let the pieces fall where they will. Um, basically, what it all comes down to is just don't don't be a, let, let let the music do what it's going to do naturally, mm-hmm. and and that all cycles back to Worlds Left Behind, the new Hans album. This was a a project of passion, and she wasn't afraid to let her music speak for itself, and it does so wonderfully um i mean this is a four out of four purple stars for me uh i can't wait to go back and and check out some of the other stuff that she has posted she's got some singles and uh and other stuff oh she's got a single posted uh that that is not on the album uh well it's a different version of it anyway um but i want to see more from her like i said this looks like her debut full-length album um, it just was released a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, six bucks, guys. Uh, or nine bucks if you want to get a physical CD. I kind of do. I haven't decided yet. Because uh, shipping from the UK, that's that's going to be expensive. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But yeah, if you're, if you're looking to... I would say if you're looking to get back in touch with your goth or your dark wave roots... Like I have been, this is a good one to do. Or if you've never given it an honest attempt, I think this is a good one to start off with as well. This is a, I think this is an album for anybody interested in dark wave and goth rock, regardless of where that interest comes from. So definitely check it out. The album again is Worlds Left Behind. The band is New Haunts. Band artist hard to hard to really separate the two, but. Uh, Check it out. Yeah, it's great. Definitely check this one out. Having heard the uh you you've listened to four songs that I've made recently that are going to be on my new LP. Yes. Having listened to those, would you categorize those as gothic? Um Oof, that's hard to say. I think one or two of them definitely um I've been toying with the. I've, I've, I've been heard, toying I've with heard, the the whole genre thing, trying to, yeah. you know, well, I've heard tack it down songs. a little I've better. Dark Empyrean. I've heard Grimoire, and I've heard the other one. I'm blanking. Oh, I'm on talking about Citizen it. Seven stuff. Oh, this is about Data Drain. I'm sorry, Citizen Seven stuff. Oof. Yeah. Um, Don't mention them, but well, you can mention Strays and Sleeping with the Scientist. Those are the two that were on the EP. Yeah. Um. But I feel like I will. I will let let out um, a couple of the themes that I've been working with, and it seems I definitely, that. Hmm. I think I think Strays definitely gets the closest. When we were, you know, talking about the concept for for the music video that's still you know essentially in production, um, 
I think we both kind of envisioned a gothic theme to the video. That was the mentality that the song definitely got across. Yeah. Um, so I think I think Strays, out of everything you've released so far, um, definitely has a goth feel to it. But it's it's like this it's like this weird middle ground between goth rock and indie rock. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? There's definitely indie rock roots in it, but there's also definitely a goth rock influence. Yeah, I've been I've been toying with with several themes that I think are pretty gothic, and and I've I've been putting a lot of religious imagery in my writing, um, and uh, I've been talking about time a lot. I ha- I get weird uh, these weird um, that you call them they're called abstract. Um, abstract nouns essentially um mm-hmm. which i always fascinate on I, when i get words stuck in my head they they tend to stick but I'm as gonna, a I'm former english little, teacher i, I know what you mean gothic with it but mm-hmm. all right so we've got uh new haunts the new album haunts. worlds left behind um go check out the artist if you want uh uh you know a quick avenue, go to our SoundCloud. That's soundcloud.com slash eventideent. Um, you can follow us on there and see everything that we repost, all of our original music as well. It's all laid out nicely for you. Um, yeah. In the album section, you can see our entire discography there. Um, so go check that out. Yeah. All right, man. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, uh, I, we're going to hear what Robert's got uh picked for us for today uh i'm all i am always excited and curious to see what you have planned for this show oh you're gonna make me blush some more man Ah, that's what i get so red i know (laughs) (laughs) all right y'all we'll be right back there's a reason they call them lazy sundays there's nothing better than sitting around and enjoying the comforts of a good book but what book should that be well, every Sunday, Eventide brings you The Bookseller, hosted by Jessica Gillen. Each week, Jessica breaks down a different book and tells you everything you need to know before cracking it open and getting lost in a whole new world. Tune in every Sunday for The Bookseller with Jessica Gillen, brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. You know, there's nothing quite as satisfying as a good conversation with intelligent company. Join comedian Don Smith every week as he sits down and talks with comedians, actors, filmmakers, writers, and everyday schmoes. It's The Life with Don Smith, Wednesdays at noon on 106.9 FM, and now available on the Eventide Entertainment Podcast feed every Friday on Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes. If there's one thing that's true about wrestling fans, it's how much they like to talk about wrestling. Join Aaron Lopez and Ben Norsworthy for the Top Rope Wrestling Podcast. Uh, Let's get ready to rumble! Tune in every episode and be ringside as these two break down all of the big matches in the world of professional wrestling. Brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. Welcome back to Track Record. It's... It's the first of what promises to be many passionate, fascinating, interesting episodes as we delve into the depths of Bandcamp and SoundCloud and Noise Trade and all the other indie distributors online looking for great new music to give to you guys that maybe you haven't heard of. Uh, I just got done talking about uh, New Haunts, which is a uh, goth rock industrial dark wave artist and her new album, World's Left Behind. And now, uh, Robert, you have got something in store for us, sir. Okay. Um, uh, this popped up randomly on 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 the feed on SoundCloud, um, and it was the name that got me. The artist is Stella in the Clouds. Um, now, here's a little, a little bio I found on on the website. Um, she's a native of France who now lives in Brooklyn. She's a multi-instrumentalist, singer, songwriter, producer, and artist that crosses over into visual arts. She studied classical music um, 
and and this is the really important line in the bio is that she merged her love for classical phrasing with accessible yet haunting melodies and i really think that that tacks down exactly what is so appealing about this artist to me um i get uh, well, there, there's a few genres at work here, um, and, and it depends on what album of hers you're talking about, but the one that really caught me is, um, let me pull it up here, it's called Exile on Earth, and it came out in 2014, um, and it's, it's indie, um, but it, it, it's dream pop and uh and folk um she kind of delves you know nicely mixes all of those those aesthetics in there um and what really caught me was was the melodies um a a specific song that i that i'll mention it's called um it's called peace now in this song it starts out kind of like a mainstream indie, you know, song. Um, she's got kind of a, I don't want to say like a, like a, like a, a cutesy tone to her voice, kind of like, um, like a mainstream cutesy melody that's kind of catchy. But then when she moves to the chorus, she completely flips the script and has this really, uh, unique, uh, unique melody that that is very contrasted to the verse but really fits well and and really makes the song stand out as not just an indie track you know that has that kind of um that sing-along type of melody to it and i i and this kind of um this duality if you will is is present throughout the entire album um, just really uh, ethereal, haunting vocals, great lyricism. Um, I've been listening to the song called Shaman pretty much on repeat. Um, it just, the the way that, again, it goes back to that line, uh, merging a love for classical phrasing with accessible yet haunting melodies. So there's this air of, experimentation uh, this air of uniqueness in the melodies but they're still accessible and still um, listenable you know she doesn't go too far off the deep end with the with the experimental um i get i, I was getting vibes of of like uh cat power and seager ross and radiohead she actually has a great um cover of a radiohead song um you know, she she can play the piano very well. Obviously, you can see it on the video. Um, she's a multi instrumentalist, um, and, and so that that album, Exile on Earth, came out in, in 2014, and that's the one that I've been mainly listening to. Um, she's got three uh, on her uh, Bandcamp discography. She's got three albums here: Stella in the Clouds EP, which came out in 2012; Exile on Earth in 14. And her newest is called Awake We Dream, which came out two years ago. Now, in this latest one, she has really turned up the experimental notch. And she's uh, she experimented with um, glitchy electronic beats. Um, I, I will say that I'm a little bit more of a fan of her folky, uh, dream poppy... Um, style of Exile on Earth. I, I think that really suited her well. She kind of went into a little bit of a new territory with Awake We Dream. And to be honest, I think that the that her um, her electronic production needs a little polishing. A lot of a lot of the the beats were not in time with the rest of the music. Um but I do like I do like the juxtaposition. You know, you'll have a very um, gentle, uh, you know, reverb laden piano track, and then you have this kind of 
a, a glitchy beat over the top of it. It makes for a very unique sound. Um, and uh, but again, her her vocals are just top notch on this. She's really good at at layering her own vocals um, and, and providing melody, you know, for herself, um, which a lot of people who record stuff in their basements, you know, they try and get good at. Um, melodies are hard, let me tell you, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but she's definitely got this this style that catches my ear a lot. Um, it's really great. Um, you can get uh, Exile on Earth. You can name your price. So if you wanted it for free, you can get it for free. You can give her $1,000 if you wanted to. Um, it looks like um, Awake We Dream is $4 or more. Um, so very reasonably priced stuff. Um, she is actually listed as being with the record label Diversion Records, which I, in looking at their website, um, it looks like they're kind of like, uh, almost like an Eventide level, uh, type label. They have, uh, it looks like, you know, 10 artists about, um, mm-hmm. you know, with, yeah, with, with, them up as well. with varying um, levels of, of, you know, success, um. Yeah, but I think she's definitely the standout artist on there. Um, she's she's definitely the one just in scrolling through their artist list that, uh, and again, probably because we're talking about it, but um, the logo they use, they have all their artists listed by their logos, and the artwork image they use for her definitely stands out from all of them. Yeah, it's the, the catchiest. rest of them. Yeah, the rest of them all seem kind of just not bad, but just they they're they're kind of wallflowery. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm definitely going to check out some more of the stuff they, they've got. They seem like, a, like I say, like you said, they're kind of in the same vein of like what of what, what, what we do and how we operate. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, and, this uh, uh, this album, this newest one, Awake We Dream, was, uh, it was, you know, recorded by herself. Um, it was mixed by um, a collaborator, um, you know. So it, this is an example of, of someone self-producing and recording and writing an album and it actually being good and of good quality. Um, she had a little well, help and, with the mixing and, and mastering, but all of the, all of the bass stuff she did very well herself, you know? And, and you can and, tell that again, like we talked about at the top of the show, she, um, she understands the benefit of, of collaborating with your fellow, you know your fellow liberal arts types, where yeah, she wrote and recorded and produced the stuff, but she had someone step. You know, hey, why don't you mix this? Maybe mixing wasn't her strong suit. Maybe she just had a buddy who was like, hey, I've got a studio. Could I mix your album? And then she had a guy, ma- uh, another guy, master it for her, and she let someone else do the artwork for her. And the reason I bring that out, I bring that up, is because I think a lot of times these indie level and uh, and and more smaller name artists similar to Stella in the Clouds or or a uh, a new haunts want to do everything themselves whether yeah. it's a a point of pride or maybe uh it's a shyness thing or an ego whatever it is there's there's a lot to be said about letting other talents whatever those talents might be have a hand in your product again Maybe it make maybe they can have an idea or a concept or something you didn't think of, and it makes it all the better. Yeah, I mean, and you know, during during a process of mixing, you know, you really do have a lot of say. You know, you're when you're mixing, you're 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 manipulating all of these separate tracks, right? And you're actually mm-hmm. really creating how the song comes across. You know. Um, and so that's a big hand in in something. And so to to, to you know to trust someone else with that, I'm sure you know you you have you know confidence in them, and you have you know you, you talk to each other, and you make sure that what they're doing is is w- what you like, and you know 
you're not they're not cutting out like your whole baseline or something you know mm-hmm. um but there is definitely a, a constructive criticism type aspect to it you know yeah it's always good to have fresh ears on it oh yeah when you're when you're mixing and and mastering having other sets of ears i think is crucial um every demo i did for the monarch soundtrack i uploaded to dropbox and said robert listen to this cuz it's it's like you know those those commercials they have for febreze where the lady walks into her son's room it's like it stinks in your room and he's like i don't notice it cuz he goes nose blind you can do the same thing with with when you're listening to your own music and producing producing audio you can you can go ear blind uh, same with when I'm when you're cutting video, having an extra set of ears or eyes handy, they might notice something you don't. Yeah, and there there's definitely tools to help. You know, there's um, there's tools where you can you can compare a song. You know, you say you have a final mastered mix of a song, and you can actually compare it to an industry standard song and see if if you know the dbs are there and and that the clarity's there um when you when you have just your ear like you say you be you can become blind to um you know and 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 if all your stuff is mixed the same you know your whole your whole entire album could be you know five to ten dbs quieter than than what an industry standard is um Mm -hmm. So it's it's good to have you know people uh, you know with uh, with a different ear, but also that know what they're doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Really? Well, I mean, no, it makes sense. Uh, I before we were recording this, I was watching uh, a movie with my mom. We were watching The Greatest Showman, um, which is a musical, and constantly throughout the film. She was having to turn the volume up and then turn the volume down and turn the volume up and then turn the volume down because the dialogue was recorded so low that when the musical numbers kicked in, which were so high, you'd blow your ears out during a musical number. So you turn it down, but then the dialogue would kick in and got turned up because you couldn't hear what anybody was saying. Yeah. And uh, that drives me crazy when I'm listening to an album in the car where I'm constantly having to turn the volume up or turn the volume down if I, whether whether it's I've seen it with like you know individual songs on an album or if I just hit shuffle on my phone and one minute I've got coheed playing and I've got it, I've got it up to you know where I want it but then I go into say you know a Hollywood undead song and now suddenly I got to turn it up or turn it down because you know, especially, you know, coming a lot of the music I listened to came out of the loudness wars. So that was a thing, kids. Yeah. There's there's you know you can always um uh, what you call it you maximize it, um Amplify. And you brick wall it. Yeah. And um I never liked that. Yeah. Um it doesn't provide enough enough clarity. It doesn't provide enough clarity, and it can be thrown off easily. Uh, the tiniest thing can throw off the the whole. I, I don't. I don't care for it personally. Um, yeah. It, it to me, it's just. It's it, to me that seems lazy. It's it's the matter of somebody not wanting to put in the time and effort to do it right the first time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, well, I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give this artist. Well, I, I've pretty much chosen an artist, but um, my favorite album, Exile on Earth. I'm gonna give four out of four purple stars. I suggest everyone go over to our SoundCloud and and uh, check that out. You can get you can get the links to everything. We're gonna post it in the description for this podcast. Um. Really good stuff. Kind of, uh, we had an inadvertent theme this week of yeah. kind of uh, uh, dark ethereal vocalists. Um, yeah, both female, both foreign, 
both uh, multi instrumentalists, both uh, solo artists that don't go by their own name. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, uh, a lot of common. Yeah, we're very sneaky like that sometimes, aren't we? Though, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, this was uh, no, and and uh, another th- one, another thing I really like about stuff like the music you find on Bandcamp is it's it's music that evokes conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, we we can sit here and and do an episode all about Camelot and Behemoth, which are great bands, and uh, but everybody knows them. There's nothing to talk about. Everybody knows who Camelot is. You know, everybody is, is is aware of these guys, so there's not much to say that hasn't already been said. When you got artists like these that are lower on the totem pole, in a in a, in a, in a lower class, as it were, and that does I didn't mean it as negative as it does, but you know, just lower and st- smaller in stature, they invoke more conversation because there's there's more to explore and there's a lot to learn because there's not as much out there. So that's why I like this stuff too. Oh yeah. So there you go, guys. You got two fantastic albums on Bandcamp you can check out right now from Stella in the Clouds and from New Haunts. Once again, follow us on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash eventident. We have both of these artists' albums reposted, so you can get a hold of them there. Again, links are in the description. Make sure you check us out. Uh, follow follow us on Bandcamp. Just go to eventidnt.com. That pulls up our Bandcamp page. Follow. Every time something goes up, you get a notification about it. Um, for example, you can pre-order the soundtrack to my short film Monarch there, which Robert and I collaborated on and picked that up, as well as the slurry of music we have available for you now. Tracks from Data Drain, Citizen 7, Boogeyman's Tears, Inari, um, Careless Whisperer, uh, Cloud Jolt, a lot of good stuff up there. You can go check that out now. And, uh, yeah, Robert, I think we have a show, man. Sounds good, buddy. Sounds good to me. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in this week. And we'll be back again next week with, uh, with a take on something else. We'll see. Bye. Bye.